So this is a long-awaited follow-up tutorial to my pen tool and line art tutorial that I did back in December. And that was an attempt to show you how to do the line art for something like you would do in the retrofuturism piece uh, that I did weeks before that. <laughs> so I'm sorry it's taken me forever, but I'm finally uh, going to show you how to do the coloring and lighting um, to this type of artwork to try to get something that, w that has that retrofuturism type feel. And what I've taken here is I've taken the, the line art from that last tutorial, made a, a couple just slight modifications, nothing too major. And I'm going to use that as kind of the piece to go off of. It's kind of like this cat lynx type thing. And we're going to color it and try to give it that same lighting effect that I did in the retrofuturism piece. So the first step is I've got this on, open on a canvas, and the canvas is uh, 4,200 pixels wide by 4,200 pixels tall. And that's at 300 dpi. I'm keeping it at print resolution um, so we can have clean lines and nice details and make sure everything looks really sharp. So the first step I need to do is find the center point here. So a quick way to do this is if you have snapping on and you have your, your rulers turned on, to turn rulers on is control R. You'll see my rulers toggle on and off. And then since I'm going to be working with this in pixels, I've got the measurement increment based on pixels. So you can also right click on the ruler directly and set what type of uh, uh, measurement you want to use. So pixels is set here. And since we know it's 4200 pixels wide, the first guide we need to drag out is going to be at 2100 halfway. And it'll kind of snap if you have snapping turned on. So snapping is under view and then you'll see down here is snap make sure that's toggled on and then we're going to drag another one down to 2100 pixels uh, downward so we can find the center point now I want to center this line art based on that center point so I'm going to hit control T and I'm just going to cursor the uh, the art around kind of into the, into the center point and I'm just using the arrow to, uh, keys on my keyboard hit return once and there you go so since this piece is based on uh, light, we basically want to have a dark background behind it so we can really light, make it look like it's, it's lit up and, and uh, kind of like neon. So the background, let's add a radial gradient to it. So select your background and go to your gradient tool and make sure that radial is selected. And I'm on Adobe Photoshop CS4. You can do this. Everything should work in CS3 and upwards. So I'm not doing anything that requires any crazy effects that haven't been in Photoshop for quite some time. So check your gradient tool up top. And then let's set the foreground color to a pretty dark gray. So I've got this set to 75, 75, 75 for the RGB values and hit OK. And then for the background, let's set it to almost a, a black, but not, not quite. So I've got these RGB values set to 10, 10, 10 and hit OK. Now with your gradient tool, let's just go ahead and fill the background from a lighter gray to almost a black. So I'm just going to drag from the center outwards and there's no real scientific way to do this and just release and fill that in. Now another trick I like to do here, and I'm going to go ahead and toggle off the line art just to show you, is set a texture against it. And if you go to the site called Graphic River, I found a nice uh, set of, of textures um, that are kind of stone textures and they're like five bucks for five of them and they're really nice. I've been using them quite often and that's what I'm using here. So I'm just going to take one of these and just drag it onto the background. I'm going to go ahead and close this file out since we won't need it anymore. And I'm going to drag this to the middle and it isn't a print resolution image but since we're just using it as a texture it's, it's A-OK -okay to scale this thing up for now. So I'm going to hit Control T, and while holding Shift and Alt for PC, I'm going to go ahead and drag this outward, and it is a perfect square, so it's going to cover our canvas just right. So we'll set it kind of like that. And it actually, it, it scales up pretty nice, I've noticed, so I'm not even going to really mess around with sharpening it or anything like that. And let's go ahead and set this layer to overlay, just like so. Now let's toggle our line art back on. And now you notice it's hard to see. So let's go ahead and hide the guides by, I, I use a shortcut which is control uh, semicolon and it will just toggle it on and off. 
And so the next thing we want to do is to overlay some color on the line art. And we want to pick something almost kind of neon is what I've found have, has worked pretty good. So on your layer effects, choose color overlay. And let's go ahead and set this to something similar to what we did with the wolf uh, line art. Let's go maybe a, uh, well, we know blue works pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and stick to blue. You can use different colors. But what I've got this to is almost 100% cyan. Uh, it's 61% cyan. So let's go ahead and drop that down to something like so. So this RGB value, oops, is... 0, 197, 226. And we'll hit OK there. And click OK again. So now that we got this down, actually let's go ahead and darken it just a hair. Now I'm thinking about it. The 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 wolf is starting to come back. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I did there. So I'm just gonna darken it down a little bit more and change the blue up just a hair. Okay, so this is 0, 156, 190. Now I'm gonna click OK. Let's stick to that. Alright. So the next step is to go ahead and make our striped pattern that we're going to use as the fill to this whole thing. And I'll show you how we, there, there's kind of a, 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 a method to how I laid that out uh, to fit this type of artwork. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to go ahead and zoom out once so I can see the entire canvas. And I'm going to grab my line tool and let's go ahead and set it to 30 pixels wide. And for the color, let's go ahead and take a swatch of our blue. And we'll, just, we'll start from there. We, we want to keep within the same family of blue. Um, it helps give it some, some, it helps make the whole piece look solid instead of, it, it, if you were to use a, a bunch of different colors for these stripes, you'd probably get some real wonky looking piece. So just make sure you use, um, uh, different values and tones of the blues that uh, work well to each other. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag down a line and once I start doing this you'll see what I was trying to explain, which I'm horrible at explaining, uh, but you'll see. So I went ahead and dragged out a line of the blue and I'm going to go ahead and create another layer and then let's create a another blue line, but let's pick something a little bit brighter. So stay within the same uh, tone here I guess and go ahead and draw out another line and with your cursor tool just go ahead and put butt these up right next to each other so I'm just using the cursor like so and I'm zooming in and out and I'm going to create another line this time let's go 40 pixels wide and let's pick a blue that's a little bit darker than our line art. We can even desaturate it a little bit by dragging it out this way. So new layer, drag out another line. And this does get kind of tedious, but uh, in the end it's worth it. So let's go ahead and, and set this one up next to each other. You don't want any space in between them. You don't want a gap. So. When I did the wolf piece, I realized that the, the gap didn't work too well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing the same thing. I'm just going to pick different values of this blue. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you the RGB values because you can pretty much whatever you do is going to be safe. So as long as it's not super high contrast and you don't throw in another color line, uh, which may look good, but we're not going to do that now. So... <laughs> So I'm just going to keep doing these uh, these lines and when I get a nice variety of color and width for this one let's go ahead and make a new layer and I'm going to bump this one up to uh, let's bump it up to 70 pixels wide and just drag down another layer another line and let's butt these back up together I'm zooming way in so I can make sure that they're pretty much seamless. So for all of these layers, let's go ahead and select all of them. So hold shift and from your top layer to your bottom la line layer, hit control E and let's go ahead and merge those together. Now let's make some copies. So make a copy and let's drag out another copy and merge that down by hitting control E. 
let's do another copy and they don't have to be precise in fact vary it up a little bit we'll give it um, a little bit more character and I'm just gonna make another layer like so and somebody pointed out a while back that if I just hit control J is it that's actually the duplicate layer aha shortcut I'm so used to just dragging it to this new layer icon so control J <laughs> you learn something new every day and let's go ahead and just kinda layer this out here and control E alright so this is basically our, our what we're gonna be using as a fill so make sure that every time you start using this layer uh, create a new copy and to make sure we have a copy in our pocket that we can uh, keep reusing. So I'm going to make an, a duplicate copy or control J which I, <laughs> I don't have the habit of using yet. And I'm going to toggle one of these copies off and for this bottom one let's use this and if you see where my cursor is, see the cheek over here? We're going to um, we're going to, to f fill this area right here but what we're going to do is we're going to transform this layer so it almost works better as a three-dimensional surface. Now, if you were to look at at now pretend this whole thing was was a three-dimensional object, you would have a flat surface over here on this side, right? So we want our layer to kind of mimic that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Control T and I'm going to rotate it so it kind of mimics the angle that that surface would be at and it's 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 kinda hard to explain this but you'll see what I'm getting at so I've, I've kinda see how I've rotated it to kinda match up that angle and so now I'm gonna hit return once or enter and set that in place so let's toggle this off real quick so we can see what we're doing and this is uh, this is showing you how I, how I kinda you, you kinda have to think three dimensionally even though it's two dimensional art to kinda give it that depth um, so let's select our line art and we're filling in just these couple little pockets here so go to your magic wand select tool and make sure the tolerance is set to 32 and the anti-aliasing is turned on and we're going to select this area and the area next to it another very important thing is make sure with your line art if you're not using this this uh, PSD file make sure all your line art connects and there's no empty spaces or when you go to select an area like this you may be selecting all sorts of other parts that you don't want in which case is a lot more uh, going in and masking and finding your selection part uh, pieces so I'm going to zoom in and you'll notice that there is a gap if you can just barely get in there see how it's going to miss kind of this edge that the select got pretty close on the line what we're gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out go to uh, select modify and expand and we just want to expand it just a hair so maybe three pixels and see how that just went into the edge of our line and that's about what we want it to do so let's toggle back on the fill color so now that we have the area selected the it's it's real simple to mask out everything we do we don't want so basically just click on the fill layer that you want to use and click this mask icon down here at the bottom of the layer palette and boom we got rid of the rest of the fill that we don't need so we're only going to need to work on half of the links face here because we're just going to copy and paste it when we're done and use it as the right side as well so we're going to continue on the left side now what we want to do is make another copy of our original fill layer like so and let's toggle this on and we're gonna go ahead and do this section kinda down here so I'm gonna control T and I'm just gonna rotate this into place and find a nice angle that'll work hit enter and come back and zoom in a little bit and go back to your magic wand tool click your line art and we just want let's see we just want these little layers here now again we need to select modify expand three pixels 
go back to our fill layer and select the mask icon and we're starting to slowly fill the uh, line art here with basically our, our stripe texture or stripe pattern so I'm gonna keep doing this and I will go ahead and fill in the uh, the left side here with the blue and then I'll come back when we're gonna change colors and and uh, fill in some other pieces so sorry to cut you off abruptly but this tutorial is rather long so please click above to head on over to part two and continue the tutorial there Feel free to take a break and come back when it's more convenient if needed. Alright, take care.